Good morning everybody, welcome to Sunday's IndyCar on the 21st of July. Uh, this week has been a week of arguments between the Scottish Government and the, well, I'd say the, the English Government in London um, over two major uh, bones of contention. The first one being the claim by uh, M Tory MP Liz Truss that Scotland has just re received £737 million of extra funding uh, and this is somehow the largesse of the, the Tory government making up for Scotland's mismanagement of the economy in some way. In actual fact, this £737 million, which the Liz Trust is wrongly claiming is additional funding, is actually part of the original funding which should have come to Scotland. But uh, the block grant was cut by £737 million because of a fall in the tax revenues in England and Wales. So in other words, because there was a shortfall in the taxation in England and Wales and because of the Barnett formula and the way it's calculated, that meant they cut the block grant by £737 million instead of keeping the block grant as it should have been. So really all that has happened is Whitehall has corrected this arithmetical so-called mistake uh, and given back what we were already owed. So for Liz Trust to uh, to misrepresent this in such a way uh, is it's just plain lying. Really, there is no uh, there's no extra money coming to Scotland. This is just the money that we should have had all along being returned in the Scottish so-called block grant. Now this is money which we have already raised in taxation here in Scotland uh, and the block grant is in fact somewhere in the region of 60% of our total tax take uh, with 40% of it being top sliced and spent by the English government on projects in England and Wales oh, and Northern Ireland, sorry. So it is disingenuous of any Tory to say that they have very generously helped Scotland out with a problem with its funding. Scotland didn't have a problem with its funding until Whitehall cut its funding because of a tax problem in England and Wales, not in Scotland. So basically they're trying to say that um, Scotland had a problem with its taxation, which is the exact opposite of the truth. England had a problem with its taxation and Scotland was made to pay for it. Uh, and now, as a, I don't know why, some kind of a sop, if you like, some kind of way of saying that the Tories are wonderful to Scotland and helping out, they're now giving back what they originally took. So that's one story and the way it's panning out uh, this week. And uh, of course, uh, Scotland's uh, government's finance secretary, uh, Mr Mackay, has been fighting this ridiculous uh, Liz Truss story all week in trying to correct the uh, the false statement that she made. And on top of that, this week, uh, there are many programmes on the BBC, particularly at the moment, looking at uh, the effects of austerity and the reasons for drug misuse in Scotland and the historically high rates of deaths uh, through drug-connected deaths, I should say, in Scotland. And I've already discussed this in an earlier programme about the method of reporting in Scotland, which looks at any death, no matter what it is. And if somebody dies in strange circumstances and their blood has any kind of drug in it, whether it's a prescribed medication or an illegal drug, no matter what the quantity is, that's recorded as a drug-related death. It may not actually have been caused by the drugs, but it's recorded in that way. So that can uh, skew the statistics and make it seem as if Scotland has a bigger problem than elsewhere. Now, I'm not saying Scotland doesn't have a big problem, it definitely does, and it has a historic problem uh, caused by long-term drug users who had started out perhaps in the 70s and 80s, now getting to an age where their vital organs are failing or they're dying from HIV, contracted through sharing needles, uh, and the idea of having safe uh, drug use rooms in Scotland is one method of preventing uh, blood-borne diseases such as HIV and hepatitis spreading amongst the drug using community in Scotland and causing more deaths. So it's a mystery as to why the, uh, the English-based government, shall we say, is blocking this move at the moment. The Scottish government says it wants to do this, it wants to introduce um, safe drug use rooms somewhere in, in various parts of Scotland where they're needed so that people who are addicted to drugs of any kind can safely use them 
maybe even under medical supervision, to ensure that those drug users have what they need to maintain themselves uh, without resorting to a chaotic lifestyle or resorting to crime to feed their habit. Now that can be done, but it is always, um, it's always disaster management when you do that. But the problem with it is that the British government is standing in the way of us doing that. And the Scottish government uh, this week has uh, decided to hold a summit, a drug summit in Scotland, but for the whole UK. And they've invited the UK uh, government to come up to this summit and to discuss the wider problem of drug uh, misuse in Scotland and the United Kingdom. At the moment, uh, the British government has responded positively, but they haven't accepted the invitation yet. It will be interesting to see whether they come up and take part in the summit, because a lot of the time uh, Scotland is being... Uh, shall we say, made into a sort of pariah state that it's somehow got a worse drugs problem than everywhere else. Uh, but you know, you have to hold that up against and compare with England's, say, uh, violent crime statistics at the moment. Um, Scotland had a knife crime epidemic about 15, 20 years ago and, and stopped it by a very broad range of, of measures at all sorts of different levels. And they plan to do this with... Uh, the drug use problem as well, but they need to really get the British government involved in this because it has to has to be a cross party initiative. It is no good just locking up uh, drug dealers or trying to stop the flow of drugs coming into the country. That is just one part of it, and there's absolutely no point in just say making the jail sentences longer. That does not cure the problem of addiction. The problem of addiction can only be managed and cured by multiple layers of different uh, strategies employed at every level of society, from schools all the way up through the working population and on into uh, older addicts who might be reaching their 50s and 60s now. Many of these, mostly, mostly but not entirely young men, um, are, are getting to the age of about 40 and dying early just simply because their bodies have been weakened so much uh, by malnutrition, alcohol abuse uh, and the constant use of drugs. That puts a tremendous strain on their liver and kidneys. It can cause failure, they can catch hepatitis, they can catch HIV and so on. So the drug deaths are always going to increase simply because there is now a demographic of older drug users who are reaching effectively the end of their lifespan because they've shortened it by using the drugs. So this is an issue. They, as a result of this, there's also uh, calls uh, for an end to austerity, and that's been going on for many, many years in Scotland, an end to austerity ever since 2008, when austerity was reintroduced in this country as a response to the global banking crisis. Um, it was made out as though the general population was borrowing too much and it was our fault that uh, the banks had crashed when in actual fact we are just paying the price for the bankers greed and we have been doing that since 2008 and I think after you know 11 12 years of austerity um, it's time to stop it uh, Scotland and the rest of the United Kingdom are now almost equally bad in having almost the world's worst pension the highest retirement age and the biggest inequality, wage and income inequality, anywhere in the Western world. It is a very bad place to grow up in. It's a very bad place to get sick in. It's an even worse place to grow old in. And whether or not Scotland becomes independent, it will still have this problem of inequality to solve. On the day after we become independent, Scotland will have to start a decades-long programme of reversing this inequality and restoring wage parity, restoring the, um, the safety net of the benefit system that has been taken away by cons consecutive Tory governments. It's been reduced and cut and cut and cut until there is no safety net left. And when an English government says to you that one hour of work in a fortnight constitutes employment and therefore you lose your benefit, you can see why it's such an, uh, an, unequal, um, an unequal society that we are now living in. Forty years ago, uh, a couple, a married couple, a man could work 40 hours a week, five days a week, have a weekend off, full weekend off, right, and 
support his wife and their family and pay their mortgage and their car and all of their bills on his own salary, and then when he reached 65, he could retire with a pension. That is gone now. You'd be hard pushed to find a couple who can raise enough money even to buy a house or run a car and to pay their bills together, combining both of their salaries together and working somewhere between uh, 45 and 70 hours a week in order to get that same level uh, of standard of living that uh, an equivalent couple had, say, 40 years ago. So Britain as a country generally has been declining steeply economically ever since uh, Mrs Thatcher's time. Since the 1980s it has gone into a nosedive. There are brief spikes in the economy caused by artificial housing booms, but at the moment we're in a long and steepening decline. And after Scotland becomes independent, that has got to be the first uh, priority of the new independent Scottish government, is to reverse the decade upon decade damage that has been caused to Scotland by poor, bad decision making by, let's face it, an elitist group of very wealthy billionaires who run the English government, who care nothing at all about the low income families, uh, people who are in work and poor, the people who cannot work because they're unwell or they're sick or, or they're injured or they're disabled. All of these people who are struggling to survive because these wealthy elitists uh, in London have taken away the only safety net they had, the only thing that allowed them to exist and subsist in society is now gone. And many of these people, over 150,000 it's estimated since the Tories uh, took over, have died as a result either of having their benefits withdrawn, having died of malnutrition or having committed suicide or by other means, but basically it all ties into austerity. So this week, on the day before Boris Johnson um, is due to be anointed the King of the Tories, it's worth remembering that Scotland both needs its independence, but it also needs to face a lot of hard facts that English domination of, of the Scottish economy and the way that it's run has cost this country thousands of lives uh, and the future of tens of thousands of young people at the moment who are coming out of school and looking uh, for careers, looking for work. <clears throat> and it is up to us, after independence, to rebuild the country from its low level at the moment into something approaching what we deserve to live in. So, that's about it for me today. Uh, just to correct a few um, untruths in the news this week. So Scotland's uh, block grant had been cut by the Tories. That cut has now been reversed and we're being given what we should have been getting all along. So Liz Truss is basically lying. Uh, and the English government has been invited to a drugs uh, summit in Glasgow by all of the groups involved in fighting drugs misuse and trying to repair the damage caused by it. be interesting to see um, if the British government decides to come north and actually take part in this instead of trying to blame Scotland for what is uh, a UK-wide drug abuse problem caused by inequality, poverty and lack of opportunities for people throughout the country who are, are driven to drug abuse because it's an escape from the dire consequences, the realities of their lives under successive Tory governments. I'll see you all later. Have a good Sunday. Bye-bye.